Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use range-based for loops in your C++ programs. So range-based for loops were something that was introduced in C++ 11. And what they allow for is better or more accurate or easier processing of containers such as arrays and vectors. So other languages have these such as Java and now C++ does too. So in this video, I will show you the basic syntax of a for loop. I will show you multiple examples of how to use this type of a for loop. And then finally, at the end, I'll show you a particular gotcha, right? Something that you, you know, that you, that you might not be aware of that um, you can't use range based for loops with, uh, even though it seems like you should be able to. So you'll want to stick around to the end for that. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at a range-based for loop. Okay, and um, the range-based for loop has syntax that looks like this, right? Here's the basic syntax, okay? So you've got that for keyword, okay? And then you've got parentheses, or right, like you're used to with a regular old for loop. And inside, you create a variable, okay, and then you reference the container, okay. And so here, a container is, you know, the container is something like a uh, array or a vector, okay. Um, there's other containers as well, but these are the two that we use and that we cover in our C++ class, so that's what we'll go with, okay. And so what happens is, is that for each element of the container, of the vector, or of the array, okay? The value gets assigned to the variable, okay? So let's go ahead and create a array, and we'll just, we'll just see how it works, all right? So we'll say int a equals uh, eight, six, seven, five, three, zero, nine, okay? And um, we wanna print this thing out. We'll, we'll print it on the screen, and you know, with a traditional for loop, you'd say for and i equals zero, i less than seven, i plus plus, right? The problem with this type of a loop is that, and, and the designers of the language recognize this, is that it's really easy to make a mistake, right? A lot of times people, when they're first learning for loops, they'll do i less than or equals seven, which gives you an off by one error, has the, the, the for loop iterate one more times than it should. And, you know, a lot of times they'll also initialize to one because they forget the beginning of uh, the uh, array starts with zero or the vector starts with zero, you know, the subscript for that, the index for that. And so it's really easy to, to have these off by one arrows crop up, right? So with a range-based for loop, you, you eliminate that, okay? So it's going to look something like this, right? So we can say for... Uh, int t, right? So they will have this target variable that the contents of each one of the elements of the array will be copied into. Okay, and so then we specify the name of the container we're going to use, in this case, array a. Okay, so then I'll just go ahead and I will see out t. Okay, and we'll put it, we'll put a space in between so that way, you know, it, it's easier to read the, the output. Okay, and then I'll move the cursor one line. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. See the output of that thing. Okay. So there you go. You got your 8675309. All right. So what happened? Well, there were seven repetitions of the for loop. Okay. Guaranteed because there's seven values in the array. It's a seven element array. So you're going to have exactly seven repetitions. All right. And so on the first repetition, this eight was copied into target variable t. On the second repetition, this six was copied into target variable t, and so on, right? You went through the entire array, didn't miss an element, okay? And all we did was put it on the screen. Well, what else could we do? Well, I'm gonna show you, I'm glad you asked, right? Let's say we wanted to find the total. So this is an example of um, you know printing the contents. Okay, well, how about we wanna find the total Find the total of um, the uh, the array. Okay. Okay. Well, we can do a similar thing. Okay. And um, this time, though, 
we're going to need a accumulator variable, okay, which we'll call total. We'll initialize it to zero. And then what we'll do is, is we'll just add to that um, the contents of t, right? So for each repetition, eight's going to go into t, and then that eight through the t variable here is going to be added to total. And then on the next repetition, six is going to be copied to t, right? And then that six will be added to total and so on okay so then we'll see out uh total okay let's put an inline in here see out inline and then here we'll say um see out the total of the array is um, total okay so then we can do that and let's test it and you're not going to, there's no way you're going to miss any of the values in the array, right? I mean, you're going to get every single value. So you can see there's the answer um, on the screen. You're not going to accidentally pull up short and miss the last element or skip over the first element or, or whatever. You will traverse every single element of that array, okay? Now let's um, find the biggest value. How about that? We'll find the maximum value. Okay, so we'll do um, find the max value of array A. So we'll do a similar thing. Now, we'll start by assuming that the first value of the array is the biggest, right? So we'll assign to max A of zero, and then we'll use our range base for loop. Okay, and we'll go through and we'll say, all right, well, if what's in T is greater than what's in max, then we'll update max with what's in T. Okay, so we got to start off somewhere. So we're gonna start with that first value in the array, eight, and we're going to assume that that's the biggest, and then we're just gonna go through every single element of the array and just compare, right? If, if any particular value is bigger than what's in max, then we're going to replace what's in max with that value. So let's, let's, let's test it. Okay, and we'll say the biggest value in the array is, and then we'll put max, right? I mean, you we could do this, we could have done all of this stuff with a regular old for loop, a traditional for loop that, you know, there's the biggest value in the array, nine, right? That, um, that you've learned before. But this is a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner, and no chance that we're gonna miss any of the elements, okay? Um, now, let's do one more example. And this time what we'll do is we'll do it with a vector. Okay, these things will work with vectors as well. Include vector. Okay, and then we'll create um, a vector of ints. And I'll call this vector v. And I'll use an initialization list here. And we'll just uh, do this. Just control C it. Okay. And I mean, it's a modern way, it's a more modern way, it's a preferred way of traversing containers when you know you have to traverse every single, you know, visit, process every single element. If you need to skip, right, say you had a scenario where you had to skip every other value, right, you only wanted to add up all of the, um, you know, every other value in the array, well, then this range-based for loop won't work for you. You'll have to use the traditional one. Okay, but anyway, so... Let's see this work with vectors, and we'll find the total for the vector again. Okay, so we'll just say total equals zero, we'll reset that, and we'll say uh, for int i uh, v. Okay, and then we'll just do total plus equals i. Okay, and then we'll uh, go ahead and display the total of the values in the vector is, and then we'll do total. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's it's a nice little tool and it's it's a way to protect yourself from yourself. So you can see there's the total of the values in the vector being 38. You know, protect you from making, you know, some silly mistakes, right? Some really easy to make mistakes. Um, one more thing I wanna show you is that you can use reference parameters or reference variables with for loops. Okay, so we'll use them to change, we'll, we'll change the contents 
of the array. Okay, so let's say we'll set all elements to zero. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll say for int, and then we'll use that ampersand like it's a reference parameter. Okay, and we'll traverse over array A. And what this now does is it has I refer to each individual element of array A. Okay, so you're not copying the contents of array A into I. Instead, what you're doing is you're linking, right? I is now linking to each individual element. And just like with reference parameters, where whatever you do to the parameter, you do to the argument, same kind of thing is happening here. Whatever you do to the reference variable, you do to the element. So I can do something like this, I equals zero, okay? So when that's done, you know, we'll be able to print it out. You're gonna see that it's all zeros. So, so that's gonna go element by element. I is gonna start off referring to the first element of array A, and then we're gonna set that first element to zero. And then I is gonna to refer to the second element of array A, and then we're gonna assign zero to that, right? By using this reference variable, just like if it was a reference parameter from a function that uses pass by reference. Okay, so int i a, we'll go ahead and we'll see out the contents, right? So we'll see out um, a, or uh, i, excuse me. Okay, and then we'll move the cursor to the next line. And here we'll say uh, the updated contents, the updated contents of array a. Right, I mean, so that's really cool. I, I really am a fan of this um, of this uh, loop, right? We, just for these reasons, okay. And um, let's go ahead and check it out. Give it, a, give it a run. Okay, so we should see a bunch of zeros, right, at the very at the very end. Okay, so there you go. You can see that the updated contents of the array zero 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 zero. Okay. Um, now, you can also throw in the auto keyword in here, and you can say something like um, for auto i, okay? And so it's gonna, the compiler's gonna look at this and know that a is an array of type int, and so then um, i is gonna be automatically treated as an integer, right? That's what that auto keyword does. So it's using type inference and making it even more foolproof, right? So even less likely that you're going to make an error by even picking the wrong uh, data type for that target variable, okay? All right, so one last thing, one very, very, very last thing, okay? So I said at the beginning, you know, hang around to the end and, and I'll show you a potential problem with this, okay? so. You have to keep in mind one thing, okay? The uh, range-based for loop will work fantastic with vectors, arrays, um, vast majority of the time, okay? But there's one place where it doesn't work. So let's see an example of where this won't work, okay? So we'll create a function called print and we'll have it accept an array of integers, all right? And then what we'll do is is we'll define this function void print okay and we'll just try to have this function print out the contents of the array okay so we'll just say something like for auto i a okay see out i right and um you know this looks like it should work work just fine in main but, um, you know, is it going to work in a function? So we'll pass our array to it, okay? And we'll try to compile. You can already kind of see the, the red squiggle. Um, spoiler alert, it's not going to work. You're going to see all this garbage down here, um, you know, indicating that there's a massive problem. Well, what's the, what's the problem? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to explain it to you. The problem is, is that int a right here this is not an array it's a pointer okay so remember that when you're passing an array to a function what you're really doing is passing the memory address of the first element of that array in other words this is really 
a pointer. Okay, pointers aren't containers. They're not. They're not arrays. They're not. They're not uh, functions or anything like that. So when you pass an array to a function, it degenerates into a pointer, and for loops don't work with pointers. Okay, so it's not going to work. So in this case, you have no choice but to use a traditional um, for loop. Right. So doing something like this. Right. I less than um, size. I plus plus. Okay, the problem is is that you then have to pass the size as an argument as well, right? To make that work. But that's what you gotta do. If you want to use a traditional for loop, you got you got no choice. Okay, however, vectors are not pointers, right? They don't degenerate into pointers. So you could do something like this. You could create a print function that accepts a vector as an argument. And it's always a good idea to pass vectors um, as um, as a um, reference or by reference. Okay. So let's go ahead and define this. So we'll say vector int um, a. Okay. So let's go back up here, make sure that we're all good there. No squiggle and no squiggle. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and we'll make it B because vector B. Okay. Now you can use a range based for loop with this. So now I can say for auto I uh, V. Okay. And then C out I. Put my little space there and move the cursor to the next line. Okay. Because it's not, because a vector is a vector. It's not, it doesn't degenerate into a pointer. Uh, like, like, um, like an array does. Okay, so then we'll pass to um, our print function vector v. Okay, which we defined right there. Okay, we'll pass that as the argument. Okay, and then we're going to see that that will, in fact, work. Okay, so range-based for loops, awesome, great. They have a ton of advantages over your traditional loops but they have limitations and i just showed you a limitation right you can't use them in a function um, that is accepting a array as an argument okay you have to use some other kind of container such as a vector in that scenario okay so that's everything that i got for you in this video if you thought the video was useful please consider giving a thumbs up if you thought the video sucked you got the thumbs down button as well Please consider supporting the channel in various ways. We've got uh, subscriptions with additional perks for as little as 99 cents a month. Leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when new videos are released. And if you're a student of mine, as usual, if you have any further questions, please feel free to email me, um, hit me up on Zoom, or stop by my office hours. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.